Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and while you're at it, click the bell to be notified of future videos. If you have been watching the block of the day for the past few weeks, you'll remember that I've been making sampler blocks for my Quilt of Valor quilt, a sampler quilt. And today I'm going to tell you about the setting and how I'm going to set them. I'll give you fabric requirements for if you want to make a quilt the same way and just show you kind of step by step how I'm going to put it together. Here is my finished quilt will be approximately 68 by 84. There are 20 blocks in the uh, quilt. They're set five, four across and five down. Here is the fabric you need for the sashing, the cornerstones, and the binding. That's what we're going to do is, that's what's all part of the setting. And so up here I just talk about choose 20 blocks that finish at 12 inch inches. And you can choose any 20 blocks you want. You can choose 10 blocks and repeat them twice. Whatever you want to do, it's just a sampler setting and you choose the blocks that you want to use. But I'll have listed what blocks I have used. Then we're going to take each block and this is the fabric you need for the frames. We're going to frame the block in a half inch finished strip of fabric, a framing strip. This tells you how to cut them, cut the strips. Then we're going to assemble the top and we're going to frame each block and then we're going to put the rows together with the sashing strips and then make the horizontal sashing rows and then put, put the quilt together that looks like this, but of course you'll have blocks in it. So these are the instructions you'll download. It gives you all the information for the fabric requirements and how to assemble the top. Now this is just assembling the top without the blocks because the blocks you choose on your own. Here are the fabrics I have chosen for the sashings, the cornerstones, and the binding. And th these two are grunge fabrics, the Seeing Stars fabric, and then this is just a white background with red and blue stars. The next thing I'm going to show you is just a short little video of the blocks I have on the design wall and the framing strips are attached. They're just kind of pinned next to them. I haven't attached them yet because I'm going to show you how to do that and then just uh, give you a little bit of information about the setting. Here's what I have so far. It's very close up. The blocks are set four across and five down. And what I've done is put them on the design wall and I've gone through several iterations of changing around the blocks. What I'm going to do is put a frame around each block that's a half inch finished. I'm going to alternate them starting in the upper left. The frame will be red and then blue, then red, then blue. And you can see the little pieces of the frame that I have pinned onto most of the blocks. And I'll show you how I took pictures of the design wall and then edited the, the photo on my phone so it would be monochrome, black and white, and it shows the values and how to rearrange the blocks so they, they're more evenly spaced, so the darks or the lights are not clumped together. So I'll do that right now. Here's a picture of the blocks on my design wall. I know I need to change some of the darks and lights around so they'll be more balanced. So here's a trick I learned from Winnie Fleming. You take a picture of your quilt, click on it, and hit edit. And then you click on this little bitty three little circles. These different lighting features show up. If you scroll down to the different features, they change the backgrounds. I go close to the end and pick up one called mono and it turns it to black and white. So you can see better 
the placement of the lights and darks. I'm going to save this, click done, and it saves one, a picture like that. So you can look at the picture and go back to the design wall and sort of rearrange your blocks. And I kind of like this little diagonal effect with the darks. And it's kind of neat to see the waves here. I'm going to go and change around my blocks and take another picture. Here's the final layout I decided on. So if we go to edit and look at the the mono again. So there it's a little more balanced now. Some of the medium value ones are kind of glumped together, but I'm, I'm happy with what it looks like now. And you don't have to save the picture each time because every time you move a few blocks around then your whole pattern changes. I found just taking a picture and then looking at the picture and then move a few blocks around, then take another picture and then look at it and move a few blocks around. I probably did it around six, eight times. So whatever it takes to make something that you're happy with. Here are the pictures. I took three pictures from the design wall. And this was the first layout I had. And you can see from the black and white that these blocks here are darker and there's more of the darker fabrics in the block than these over here that have a lot of light fabrics in them. So there were four of them basically one, two, three, four that were the darkest I thought and I decided to put those in the four corners. So then I took another picture after the blocks were in the four corners and I think I probably changed around a few more but now I wanted to get some of these darker ones on this side, sort of disperse them around the rest of the quilt. And I did that. And now here is where I started adding the, the framing strips here. You can barely see these, but they're these little straight strips. I just pinned them to the top of the block. And what I was trying to do, for instance, this block has a lot of blue around the edges so I wanted to put a red frame around that. So this is a red frame strip here. This block was already framed and it was framed in blue and so this one was framed in red. And then what I wanted to make sure was that when I alternated the blue, red, blue, red and then red, blue, red, blue that I didn't put a red frame around a mostly red block so then I switched them around a little bit after that and then there was the idea that maybe two blocks next to each other had the exact same fabric so I wanted to get that mixed around as well and so I think this was yeah that was the last one I, of the pictures I took so this is the layout you saw in the video before now I'm going to show you how to put the frames around each block. Here are the framing strips and so this is a mostly blue block and I'm putting a red frame around it. We'll cut two strips that are one inch wide and I know that's very narrow but the half inch finished frame looks amazing on this quilt. You'll cut two strips one inch by twelve and a half inches. These will go on the sides and then two strips one inch by thirteen and a half inches. These will go on the top and bottom of the block. I don't think any of my blocks were directional, but if you have a directional block, you, you want to start with the sides first. So we're going to sew these on the side here. Now you'll notice that we have some points here that we want to have pretty points. Normally I put this part next to the feed dogs because the seam allowances are in there and that helps with the, the stitching but since I want to be able to see this point when I stitch I'm going to put the framing strip at the bottom next to the feed dogs and put this on top. I just pin both ends and then put as many pins as you need to. Sometimes you'll have to ease in some of this. Now when we sew this, our quarter of an inch, we're going to start here and sew a quarter of an inch and start aiming for this point here. You want to stitch right here at this point so you won't cut off your points in the front. 
and then just continue stitching to the next one. Go right here at this point and if this is not a quarter of an inch from here to the edge that's okay because you're more concerned with keeping that pretty point and then finally just stitch off of this. You'll stitch that for both sides and press your seams open. Then you'll take your 13 and a half inch strip and do the same thing at the top and the bottom. And once I do this, I'm going to put it back on the design wall where it belongs. Now I'll go through and I'm going to attach all the framing strips now. The frames are all attached now and this is the top row. I put the sashing strips between the blocks and the top row. And you can't see them too much because they're light on a white background. But anyway, here are the frames. And earlier in the video, I said to press the frames open and I found it easier and it looked better to press the seams toward the frame. And I think my little dog Lucy is going to be in the camera picture in just a minute. Yep, there she is. There's Lucy, she has her own quilt. And so here's all the blocks. Now we're going to just attach all the rows. We're going to put sashing strips between each block and on each side. We'll have five sashing strips in each row. So let's do all that next. I've taken the top row off of the design wall and I've stacked them. So this top one is on the left and then the next one is on the right of that and then each one goes to the right. So I know that this is row one and this is the upper left part of the row. And how I keep track of that is I have a little piece of paper and I mark this number one and I'm going to just pin it here in the upper left hand corner of this block. So this tells me this is row one and this is the upper left hand corner. So when I start sewing the sashing strips, I'll have this stack at my sewing machine and I'll turn this here and then piece this on here and then piece another one here and I'll go do that. The sashing strips are pieced to either side of block one and row one. Now I'll take the second block and stitch it to this sashing strip here and then stitch my other my next sashing strip here and do that all the way down for the first row. The first row has sashing and there are four blocks across. There they are. And part of these are pressed open and part are pressed to one side so it looks a little funky on the back. Press your seams open or press your seams to one side, whichever works best for you. And we're going to do this for all the other four rows. And remember to number each row. So now you don't have to put this up and you don't have to worry about if you've got them in the right order or not because as long as you have this listed here, you know that this is the left side of row number one. And always pin to the left side. Now I'm going to finish all of the rows with the sashing. I've added the vertical sashings to all of the rows and this is row five. And I press these toward the frames. And so they all look just like this. Next we're going to make the horizontal sashing rows and we're, we'll do six of these rows. You're going to take five of the cornerstone squares and four of the sashing strips and make six of these horizontal sashing strips. Since I pressed toward the framing strips, I press these toward the cornerstones and you'll make six of these. Then you'll take each row that you've sewn together with the vertical sashing strips and sew a horizontal strip across the top of that. And I press these seams toward the sashing strip this time. Do that for all five of the rows and row five will have an additional strip at the bottom. And then we're going to sew those rows together. I have the quilt top all put together, but since my photography skills are 
terrible. I wanted to show you some close-ups on the video camera because the colors come out better here. Then I'll show you some pictures uh, hanging on the design wall of the entire quilt. Here's what it looks like. The alternating frames, the blue and the, the red alternating. And here are all the, all the different blocks I used. It's all different types of fabrics as long as they had some kind of red, white, and blue to them. And here's some more. So this is the quilt and it turned out really nice. You can use this setting for any quilt you want. It's just a simple frame each block and use simple sashing and cornerstones between the blocks. So now let's look at the quilt on the design wall. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and while you're at it, click the bell to be notified of future videos.